brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that sends 5% of your monthly plan price to your favorite charity. No contracts, nationwide coverage, risk-free guarantee. Learn more at CharityMobile.com. From time to time, I like to bring the messages of good bishops and good cardinals who stand up in opposition to Francis. It is worth noting here that most of the bishops who do so are either retired or have very vibrant sort of secondary careers as writers whose books are published and widely read and provide them the means to have some measure of independence from the threats of Rome for speaking out. Today we have one such bishop, Archbishop Hector Agur, a longtime nemesis of Francis in Argentina. And I say nemesis on purpose. Francis, back when he was Jorge Bergoglio, was the most important figure in the church in Argentina, having been made a cardinal. He was highly influential before that. Hector Agur, the Archbishop of La Plata, often took positions in opposition to Francis and the things he, did, he said. And he had eventually retired and has for years been writing letters that got very little attention against the things Francis is doing. So I decided I should add him to the list of bishops we periodically bring the writings of to, especially since you may have noticed the opposition to the things going on in the church these days has slowed down in terms of the bishops giving statements. You may have noticed that even Vigano doesn't release as many letters as he used to, that Bishop Schneider doesn't release as many letters as he used to. One wonders why that is. Cardinal Mueller still makes the, the rounds on EWTN and a few other shows and gives interviews to similarly minded European news outlets, but the opposition to Francis seems to be almost slowing down in terms of bishops willing to say things publicly. There may be a good reason for that. Perhaps they're preparing for the next conclave behind the scenes to make sure this doesn't happen again. Or perhaps they don't feel that their resistance is achieving much. I'll let you decide what that is. Let me know in the comments if you have an idea of why that might be. But here, Hector Agur, the, Arch, the Archbishop Emeritus of La Plata, Argentina, has some striking things to say about Francis. You see, Francis gave us some uh, words of wisdom, if you want to call them that, about the role of ideology in the church, ecclesiastical ideologies, how seminarians and priests and laity need to give up on their ecclesiastical ideologies. That was a dig at traditionalist when he said it. There's an overt hypocrisy to that statement, as Archbishop Gore here will explain to you. The most ideological figure in the church today is himself, Francis. It's not any of the bishops opposing him. It's Francis, without question. And he, support, he surrounds himself by ideologues like himself. The difference is, of course, that it's the ideologies, as he sees them, that oppose him that he is dismissive of. And those that oppose him aren't really ideologues anyway. They are people who actually want the Catholic faith to be the same as it has essentially always been. Now, whether the, those opposing him have a true understanding of that or not, in terms of what the faith actually is, I will leave you to decide. And I say that because some will say that figures like Cardinal Mueller are not exactly the most, not historically the most orthodox of bishops. Again, I'll leave you to decide that. But here is the letter of Hector Agur, Archbishop Emeritus of La Plata, on Francis's hypocritical statements about ideology. Francis is a hypocrite on the subject of ideologies. In his Epiphany Mass homily, Pope Francis warned against ecclesiastical ideologies in order to find the meaning of Holy Mother Church. It was a fair and timely observation. In the 1970s, ecclesiastical ideologies caused serious damage, confusion, and abandonment of the priestly vocation. They became strong in some sectors of religious life. Above all, Marxism became an obsession under the pretext of reaching out to the poor. The relationship of the church with the culture implied an evangelization in reverse. Worldly ideologies gave rise to ecclesiastical ones. Later, it was the cultural vigencies. They had their turn and impregnated the Christian vocation with their criticism of tradition, which was discarded as the opposite of pastoral aggiornamento. The meaning of the church is based on faith and developed in the experience of ecclesial life. Ideologies simulate the meaning of the church and destroy it. Generally, they come from feverish minds that imitate models of the world. In this way, they ignore the gospel or contradict it. Ideology pretends to be an implementation of the gospel, and therein lies the error and injustice. 
The experience of the 1970s spread widely in the church. The last decade of Paul VI's pontificate, from 1968 to 1978, was one of theological ideology, which spread a repudiation of Humanae Vitae by various authors, especially German and French ones, and ideologies of a socialist nature due to an obsession with Marxism. The Church of the Poor was a swindle that deceived many. In several countries, particularly in Latin America and Africa, it took on a revolutionary aspect. Many Catholics, especially priests, committed themselves to uh, wicked movements. In Argentina, this phenomenon became a real internal war with thousands who were caught in, in amongst it. The warning of the Supreme Pontiff illustrates quite well a fundamental problem of the current path that has opened up in Rome. Some of Francis's positions can only be understood by recognizing the two ideologies that drive him. The first is a doctrinal nature, theological progressivism with a relativistic bent. This is how one can understand the tyranny against tradition and the contempt he experiences from Catholics attached to it, which is revealed all the time, especially after the scandal of fiducia supplicants, a declaration that should not be obeyed. Sometimes spontaneously and other times in a program manner. Catholic identity and fidelity to a line in effect for centuries, but always updated. These things are no longer the inspiration of the pontificate. One grave decision was the appointment of Cardinal Victor Manuel Fernandez as prefect for the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith. The author of little books on spirituality and a scandalous book titled Mystical Passion, Spirituality and Sensuality, in which he presents a fleshly interpretation of mystical union with God and ignorance and distortion of mystical theology. This cardinal occupies the position honored for many years by the great theologian Joseph Ratzinger, later Pope Benedict XVI. Francis's theological progressivism has been revealed especially in the area of morals, where one also perceives the theological tradition of the Jesuits, which at one point was rigorous but has more of a laxist orientation nowadays. The other ideology that inspires Francis is Peronist populism, which is always found in several Argentinian bishops. It is a political and cultural current combined with the dictatorial decisions of the boss. Taken to Rome, this ideology is manifested in a change to the identity of the church, which no longer appears as a body or a communion, but rather with the figure of an inverted pyramid, the people at the top, the hierarchy below. Another image used by Francis is the polyhedron, which illustrates the overcoming of the classic distinction between the teaching church, which is the magisterium, and the church that listens and learns, which is the faithful. This distinction is not a historical creation, but is based on the gospel. The Pope's alteration of the reality of the church hides his despotic decisions. Peronism is the name given in Argentina to the doctrine and followers of Juan Domingo Perón, three times a president of the nation. Peronism is a, is a unique ideology since it includes obedience to the di dictates of the boss. This movement has had a decisive influence on Argentine politics over the last 80 years inside and outside the government. Jorge Bergoglio, like more than a few priests in Argentina, has sympathized with Peronism since his youth, and this atavistic tendency explains the pastoral bent of his pontificate. Ecclesiastical Peronism has become papal Peronism. This makes it possible for us to understand how the ideology of the popular will does not exclude the authoritarianism of some of Pope's actions. The concept of ideology signifies negativity and opposition to, or falsification of, the truth. There have been subjectivist and heterodox ideologies throughout the history of the Church, such as the modernism of the early 20th century. It is admirable how St. Pius X knew how to understand, expose, analyze, and refute this heresy in Pascendi Dominici Gregus. Progressivism is more diffuse. It is possible to recognize its principles, but we lack a characterization of its identity as an ideology. The meaning of the Church is verified when ecclesiological truth is perceived subjectively. The member of the ecclesial body becomes aware of his belonging to totality and through charity enjoys it as total availability. This is a component to the experience of a Christian life. In this dimension, Christ is perceived as the head of the body. Love for Jesus and the church is a unity that gives the Christian the joy of being in ecclesial communion. The insufficiency and reductionism of ideology, which is produced in contact with secular ideology, can be seen from this fully Catholic perspective. In the homily quoted at the beginning of this article, the Pope expresses quite well how necessary it is to lay down or abandon ecclesiastical ideology in order to, quote, find the meaning of the Holy Mother Church. The ideologies that explain the orientation of the current pontificate, theological progressivism and Peronist ideology of the popular will, bear an Argentinian stamp and can be transmitted through Francis's discourse to particular churches. Signed, Hector Agur, Archbishop Emeritus of La Plata, Buenos Aires, February 14th, 2024, Ash Wednesday, at the beginning of Lent. 
a simple but easy to follow message from Hector Agur. It's re re worth reminding people that he was succeeded in La Plata at, by Archbishop Fernandez. Hector Agur was an archbishop in Argentina who was a sort of nemesis to Francis. When Francis, then Jorge Bergoglio, the Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio, would take overtly heterodox positions in the church in Argentina, it was Archbishop Agur of La Plata who would stand in opposition to him, frequently. And he was, once again, dismissed rather quickly <laughs> once Francis became the alleged pope. Once uh, Hector Agur be hit retirement age, his resignation was accepted the same day it was submitted. Whereas Francis often takes his time, depending on the bishop, to accept them. Sometimes not accept accepting them at all until the age of the bishop actually finally catches up with them. But his was accepted that day and was not permitted to live in church property. Thus, the mercy of the wonderful, wonderful Pope of Mercy is shown on full display for all to see. Curious what you think about that, so let me know in the comments, please, and hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps a lot, too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.